So you're from some beautiful parts of the world. It's not surprising that your art reflects some of these uh, beautiful landscapes. Yeah, this is my art studio. Yeah, so this is where I work from. Yeah, this is my working space. Oh my gosh, look at those paintings. Love it, love, love it. Very beautiful. Lots of uh, lovely tonal qualities in those. They're really nice, yeah. aren't they? Oh my, that's fantastic. That's an actual tabletop. Again, this is the, the, the Turner-esque paintings I, I like doing. Mm. Mm. They are, they've definitely got the Turner qualities, haven't they, in them? They're very beautiful. I mean, your use of light is remarkably good, which I think you're known for anyway. Yeah. Colours, fantastic there. Yeah. This is actually this is actually um, recycled cardboard, so you can see see the. You, you're using sustainable um, materials yeah. there. That's amazing. Yeah. Also, your work speaks for itself. Actually, as a painting always does, it speaks. It does speak and communicates feelings, emotions, subtleties, beautiful um, tonal works. Um, and it captures our beautiful landscape and certainly the ones I've seen of our traditional landscapes that you follow with, you know, we were talking about Turner and Constable, of course, and people yeah. that we all recognise, definitely there's that element of there and then your own spin on that. And some of the most beautifully expressed work were for people who were dyslexic. When I studied at Bath Spar, 35% um, of the students were dyslexic, dyslexic, 35%. Perhaps it's because we, we connect some other parts of our imagination and can express, I don't know. Obviously, you were working in the plastics, fact, uh, plastics works or factory for a long time. You went into, back into art and you went yeah. and studied and, and got your um, degree and everything else. That must yeah. have been quite, quite, a, quite a thing to do. What, what made you make that decision to go from, if you like, a known sort of work to to art and back it back where your passions lay. I got um I got um in two thousand in two thousand and one, um our, my relationship broke up, um with my ex my Rachel and we got we uh she wanted to get a divorce so I got a divorce, and that's when I went back into the creative industries. So your so a life changing situation took you back into it. All right, I love that. So did you paint as and draw as a child or did you express your creativity um, when you were young? Yes, yeah, so when I was young, I, when I was young, I, I um, you, used to draw, used to paint. Um, uh, when I, was, when, I, was, when I, I, I went to school called High Nature School in Street and I can remember when I was five years old when I used to do demonstrations. But you, you as an artist then, so you've always done that and you did demonstrations. So your family, are they artists as well? Or is that just you? Or how does, how does that happen? I think my, my, well, my, when my dad was alive, he, he, he used to make a lot of models and he, and he would obviously, he, he has got a, these are, uh, these are uh, models of Aerofix models. So he used to fix those as obvious there's the skill in gluing and painting them and, and, and uh, things like that. That's interesting. Yeah. So he was, he was... But, but, but a serious artist, um, not so much, no. Okay. So you made the transition then to be, to go and study and obviously go on to Bath Spa, which I read about the uni and get all of that and do your degree. Now, obviously, when you were in there, you were presumably learning new techniques and establishing your style. How would yeah. you describe your artistic style from your point of view? I mean, other people have a take on it, but how were you the artist? How would you describe it? Well, I think it's from very, very modern mm. to very, very, to romanticise or impressionistic. I say it's romanticise stroke modernism or or from the old school of art yes yeah which again we were talking about because when we see your work which you've see, we've had the privilege of seeing some of them, them in your studio they they do they 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 invoke you with that um, more natural uh, wonder of, of, of the land and then the di different aspects of light and colors but they also make us feel like there's melancholy 
nice aspect of that. We're almost drawn into the, the slightly melancholy of the feeling of, the, of, of a painting, which is rather lovely, particularly with some of the seascapes as well that you were showing me. So yeah. when, you, when you use, you use acrylics, that's correct, isn't it? Or do you use anything else? Mostly acrylics I, I use, but sometimes I will use watercolour, but mostly 99% is, is acrylic paints. Okay, yes. And so do you have any favourite acrylic um, uh, products you use, or do you just use anything you can get your hands on? Um, Doughty Rotor will be my, my, preferred, my preferred materials. Yes, I think we all, we all have favourites, don't we? They're quite quick to work with, aren't they? And you can yes, establish a lot of texture with them, which is rather nice. I saw earlier that you were painting on, obviously, you just said, uh, uh, recycled cards and yeah. working on wood and things of yeah. this sort of nature. Do you have, do you work with canvases or do you tend to like to work with uh, sustainable, recyclable materials? Or how do you like to sort of produce that? Because that was quite amazing on the on the... On the on the um, the table. Wow, that was awesome. I think um, I mostly use I mostly use canvases. Um, obviously, the tabletop was um, was recyclable, and and it's been out in the garden. I decided to why not paint on it. Someone cleaned it up for me. Again, the the, um, the car the, the 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 backing board is is it, is, exper is experimental. I love it. I love it. Well, during these times, during lockdown, we can do that, can't we? I'm yeah. assuming that you, um, you're able to um, sell your paintings and exhibit your paintings in various places. And I, I'm guessing that's quite successful for you. I mean, do you find that you, when you exhibit, that you get um, a lot of interest? And have you exhibited anywhere that you can remember that's pretty amazing from your point of view? Um. Obviously, at the moment, this year this year was fully booked for art shows, um, but all that's gone at the moment. Yeah. Um, the most, presume the most prestigious, I, the most prestigious place I exhibited was Houses of Parliament. Um, it was to celebrate the 40th year of, of Disabilities Act Right, and that was in 2010 to 2011. And my work was selected to to exhibit to celebrate that um and obviously I'm, that's the, that's the that's the, that's the most sort of biggest place i've really exhibited would be london london that's marvelous i mean that's amazing most people would really really want to do that i mean and you talk about this and we talk about disabilities and i know you're very passionate about that side of things um yeah do you tend to be, are you able to teach other dyslexic um, pupils art at all? Or is that something you do or you're interested in? That's, before this, before this storm broke, um, I, was, I, was, I was working with a, 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 a lady called Sarah and we had letter headings um, to go out to school, to go out to old people's homes, was to do teaching and to build obviously earn a lot try to earn a proper living from it but uh, at the moment everything's been put on hold so everything's so I'm, I'm doing all the stuff is interviews um is using social media yeah of course like everybody else i mean obviously from my point of view i find it amazing that you've carried your passion for art all the way through your work life and then decided, that's it, I'm going to give it all, all, all I've got and go and study again and come, you know, obviously back into the, uh, the foray with your beautiful canvases, yeah? So what, where, where did you get your liking of your, because you use a lot of um, tonal greys and some of your light compositions. Did you yeah. learn that in uni or was that something that you established for yourself? I think it was. Uh, I've got, there's a, there's a, I'm going to explain this in a story. When I first, when I, when I first studied at Strode, um, we went in and we had to choose a picture and paint it. And the, the art teacher said to me, "You need to grid it, grid it up." I said, oh, "I can't do that." I said, "Well, do it by hand." So I did it by hand, and everyone would come and each each interview, each different student said, well, that's a different artist. And basically the art teacher said, I can't teach you to paint. Simple as that. That's all there is to it. And so it was obviously, it was a boring, it was a 
God-given talent and I was born with it. It's, and it's, sometimes it's hard to explain the reason why you just, just, you just do it. Yes, I love that. Now, I've often said that because creativity comes from within. And I think some people have the gift and other people don't. Now, when I look at your work, I am mesmerized by it. It's very beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm sure your, your grandchildren are equally as in awe of some of the things you produce. Um, now, Constable and Turner, whom you've been likened to as artists, incredible artists, and we're talking about uh, 1700s, early 1800s artists, whom uh, we all know, because if we, if we don't know them, I think we've probably been switched off, because obviously in museums and in, in everything else, we know who they are. To be likened to those artists is quite an amazing thing, an accolade of sorts, because they're they were they're just awesome so where did you first get that who first coined that you were like a turner or a if you're like a painting or did, was that something you thought of no not at all um i had a um i was on facebook in 2011 and i was chatting to this guy in india and he says he says your works your works much like turner's and he says he, he called me yeah, you know, the turner of the 21st century. And it was nothing which I did. Um, and work, working up the phrase, um, turner of the 21st century, or painter of light, um, no, the, I, I, I didn't pay anybody. I didn't control anybody. He just... That's lovely. He just... It just... That was it. Um, simple as that. I love that. So you, you're a modest man, and I like that, because people have said some lovely things about you, because I have read quite a lot about you, Mark, and those statements mm -hmm. you've said about your workmanship is so wonderful, about the light and the composition and the use of colour, and of course, as we've just said, likening you to these people is a, is a, is a wonderful thing. Um, now, from my point of view, I mean, I was looking at what you've done and everything else, and I was thinking, wow. Yeah. You know, he's produced a lot of work. You've produced a lot of work. You also have a work, you have a workspace or a, you're working from, are you just working from your studio or do you work from somebody? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is obvious. This is, this is, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, obviously, this is a work in space. And obviously, I've got the, 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 the light, the, the, so, sun's coming through the window at the moment, so it, you've got a pure natural light. Mm. Uh, yeah, so so I'm very so um, so. I, to be honest, we've go back to something a bit more serious. I think um, I decided to, I decided to have an art studio in January, and I hummed and heard about it. Eventually, I I said, right, let's do. Get, so I got someone to decorate it, paint it, and thank. Thank, thank God that that I had the studio built because um, right through lockdown, right through lockdown, it's been a godsend. Absolutely, I have to. I'm very privileged to have an art studio with beautiful light too. And when people ask me, I actually say light is the key because you know whenever you're producing your work, the light source is so important. That's interesting. So. Uh, I, Tips on painting for people who want to get involved. What sort of tips do you give people when they say, "Hey, I want to, <laughs> I want to get to become an artist"? What do you well, say to them? The first thing is to, is to is to enjoy it. Is to really enjoy the experience of art. And obviously, the, the, fund, the, the fundamental, the, the basic understanding of all art, the under, which underlies it, is drawing. And if you can draw. Then painting will come come quite naturally and quite easily. But I think you 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 got to love art, and if you can express that in in any in any form or any way, um, my method of teaching is normally make sure everyone's happy and relaxed. Give them the, give them some canvas or and let them naturally draw or or I give them something to draw. They can choose something what they want to do and is basically let them get on with it then then I, I my art is very who's loose whatever it's called it's very hands-off very hands-on 
when I've got a step in, I will do. But normally, let them, let them find their own level of drawing. Yes, definitely. So there's, no, there's no pressure. There's, there's no, there's, okay, but if, if, they, if they're really paying serious money, then you've really got to work hard with them. But 99% of, again, last year we, we did uh, we did an art do in Glastonbury. Uh, we brought up, up on top of the Tor Hill. Basically, we had a free day festival. I brought all the paints, everything. And basically, 99% of the children did it themselves. It's like yeah. Ruben, like, Ru, like Rubens and Isabel. You just give them the paints. And obviously, it can be a, bit, a slightly bit of a mess sometimes. 99% of the time you you it's hands off hands on when you want to come in I love it so we're talking about true creative expression because children do it naturally if they've got that in them they tend to produce things and they have some idea I love that I mean I've spoken for years about natural creative expression but a lot of people won't let people do that they tend to want them to to do exactly what they say and exactly what they've got to copy and things like that and it's, it's not so great no <laughs> I we we I had an artist friend. He was terrified of exhibiting work, but he 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 did, he he did some art lessons, and he did some art lessons, and he said, "How do you teach?" I said, well, I, "Hands off." He says, "They got to copy me." They got this artist. They got to copy him. I said, "Well, they're not learning nothing. If they're copying you, how can they be learning?" They got, they got, they got, they got copy my style. What's the point of they come into your classroom? They don't learn nothing. I said, but with me, is I think for the worst thing for an artist is for someone else to copy that artist. They don't learn themselves. That's very true. I agree with you. And you don't learn your self-expression, whatever that might come out as. Um, when you, you obviously are quite confident about exhibiting your work, and I do know a lot of artists don't want to do that. They're very, very frightened of what people think about their artwork. How do you overcome that? Because obviously you've got your work in all sorts of places, like Saatchi, you've got them, um, I've seen them in copious amounts of sites. I know you've got them exhibited in other places. How do you overcome that? Because you're quite confident, actually, I must say. Okay, I have to give you two examples. Mm. Um, one, uh, we, uh, we've got a Tesco's in street, which is closed. Uh, and we did the, we did the create, create space, create space. So one day I put some abstracts up and this, this guy in a wheelchair and his wife was pushing him away. And he said, a kid could do better than that. I said, well, I, I, I didn't interfere. So, and then I said, okay, then I said, he said, he said, do you do this? Yeah. I said, well, a kid could do better. I said, well. I'll give you a canvas. I'll give you some paint, and he turned. He turned me down. <laughs> oh. um, another example: if if I is is if I if I exhibit a picture, if I get hundred people, if I get hundred people say say the same thing, or I get a hundred people say, all hundred people say something different. I prefer the hundred people who. Say, say something is different but if, if everyone comes and agrees your painting is brilliant you're not challenging the viewer's concept oh that's brilliant that's so true that is so <laughs> true if they don't interpret themselves in that work then obviously they're not involved in your work i like what you do with light on water and light on if you like in your compositions your light on water is particularly good you obviously have a technique for producing light on if you like on the landscapes, if you like on the water, how do you work with your shadow and light so well? That's a good question. Uh, to be honest, I don't think there's no proper answer. I think is I normally what I do is is use the the, the color from the tube raw. So I mean, like um, uh, yeah, show me. That would be lovely. Thank you. Can you see the picture? Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, this one here is is to um, is to use the color raw. Is use it straight from the tube, so it's not diluted. Make sure make sure the water make sure all your water is clean. Um, but that's what I suggest is is use the color raw from the tube. 
Yes, I, I would, I would, I would agree. I would say, I would say, a lot of artists who, and they're not usually as confident as that, as to use the war, to use it raw. But when you do use it raw, it does give that 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 feel. I looked at your series, which was around constellations and more around, if you like, not so much the landscape now, but if you like the skyscape. Where did you get inspired for that from? Where did that come from? Well, it's quite simple. Me and my brother. Paul, we uh, we're fat. We're, we're um, we love the weather, and when we was kids, when we was kids, we used to go. We used to sit up all night, watch thunder and lightning. Oh! And I was I was born on the south coast, and we've had a we've uh, we've had a love of the we have, we've had a love of the, the creative universe, the, the creative world we live in. I get that. Uh, yeah, I get that. So as an artist, you're observing your, your, if you like, what's happening actually out there. So when are you doing this at the moment? You're working with this um, other community, working with the, um, you said Dash. And Dash. Then, yes. And, and you're painting. Are you painting at the moment prolifically? Or in other words, you're painting on regularly? How many hours a day do you paint? Or do you not have to have at the moment, I've I've spoken to Dash, and they're, they're desperately short of money. So what I suggested to them, they pay for the paint. I'm going to do them for paint, and so they can auction to make money for themselves. That's wonderful. Okay, so now you're you're producing work for them. And what are you actually painting for them at the moment? For the viewers, they've got to choose. They've got to choose what they want. They, they, they hopefully they will choose what they want to paint. And then I can transfer that onto the canvas. Oh, that would be wonderful. So what's your most recent painting from that you've actually produced then in that in that studio of yours? Um, the one with the the, the, the tabletop and uh, uh, that one there. And how many how many paintings have you painted? Because you've been actually painting now for twelve years, according to what I read. Yeah, so twelve years. <laughs> Probably about two, three hundred. That's extraordinarily good, isn't it? Oh my gosh! Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, you're living the dream of being able to do what you want to do with painting, where most people spend their whole lives not being able to do that or show anybody that they've done it. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I mean by that? Um, it's. I think it's down to individual. I think it's down to confidence I, I believe do you actually when you get your pictures and you paint them do you actually go out and paint on site or do you take a picture or do you work from an image how do you actually produce your paintings 99 percent from imagination from imagination you get an idea mm. uh, and mainly mainly from my own imagination Oh, wow, that's excellent, because they're so beautiful in the sense that they actually feel as if they are literal places, and then you're bringing, those into, bringing life into them. That's, inc that's extraordinarily good. Would you say yeah. that you, you have a very good memory for places, then, in your head? I think it's just... Uh, I, think it's, um, I think it's knowledge, um, knowledge of the natural world, and the experience of a lifetime. So you... Obviously, from other people's point of view, because they're watching this to, to learn about you, the artist, and, and appreciate your work, then your tips are that your work is invoked from your um, mind's eye, from your imagination, that you're yeah. using acrylics to produce the beautiful uh, colours, and as I said already, the tonal works that you create. And you're using, what sort of brushes do you use? Do you use palette knives, brushes? Do you, how do you produce your texture? Um, palette, uh, I use uh, shaving brushes, palette knives, uh, tissue, um, big paint brushes, medium paint brushes, uh, palette knives, um, anything, anything, anything within reason. Being able to see your studio and being able to appreciate your work in your workspace, I think, speaks for itself. You're very candid, Mark, as a person. You're a very nice person to talk to. You've taken what people have said about your paintings. You've taken them and you've embraced it. They've been beautiful, simple explanations of them. I've appreciated it when I've looked at your work. And in, in my interviewing you, I've seen that within you, the artist, because that's who we're talking about is you, Mark yeah. Noble, the artist, yes? Yeah. And okay. 
And I like the fact that you've had the courage to go after your dream and do more with it. And I Please subscribe to the Simply Inspired channel for more videos on these subjects. Thank you.